LSU in terms of, let me hit you with this first and foremost, because we had this discussion on our USC show the other day. I have my thoughts about why Vegas is looking at it this way, but um, why is LSU a full touchdown favorite in this game? Yeah, it's a, it's a little shocking, you know, that numbers uh, crept up. You know, I, I think it was floating around like five and a half, six, and now it's, you know, up to seven. It's pretty remarkable considering, you know, LSU defensively still has a lot of questions. But, Mark, when you look at a lot of, like, returning production statistics, it is crazy to think that LSU returns a lot of their snaps from last year when they lose – Brian Thomas Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Jaden Daniels are three best players on the team last year, but they return their entire offensive line outside of center, and Kyron Lacey is still a pretty good number one option and probably a top 10 NFL draft prospect at wide receiver uh, next year. So LSU offensively still should be pretty good. You know, the big question obviously is, is defensively going up against Miller Moss, who looked really good in his only start last year versus Louisville. So let's stay with the offense because I'm going to make a similar comment about a unit defensively. I would have been hard pressed any time ever since Nick Saban took over and LSU has just been flooded with keeping local talent and been fine from a talent perspective for the last 20 plus years to really look at the running back room and say, mm, it's lacking. Uh, is Caleb Jackson possibly a guy that will be in the Jeremy Hill, Leonard Fournette, uh, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire line of, okay, that's that's a go-to guy. That's a premier back. Yeah, so most of LSU's running back success have come from tanks, guys that are, you know, in that 215 range and, and up, and Caleb Jackson fits that mold. I mean, he is an absolute freaking loot unit obviously they are hoping he takes that next step and look if he becomes a more complete back that you can trust him in pass protection you could trust him catching the football out of the backfield uh you can trust him uh to to hit the hole uh that that you want him to then yeah he will probably be the best running back on this team and maybe uh the best running back since Clyde Edwards Delay or one of the names uh that you just mentioned and then of course you have Josh Williams who's been reliable uh you got the news that john emory uh makes the return back to lsu mark these are two guys that were on the 2019 lsu national championship team and uh, they're coming back uh for year sixes and then you have Caden durham who i think has a little bit better shot to be one of the best offensive players on this team i i there are a few true freshman offensive players, Mark, that I've ever been higher on than Caden Durham, uh, the top 100 running back coming in from Duncanville. So the running back room, it it should be fine. It's not the most loaded room. Going into last year, Mark, they had eight scholarship running backs, which is an obscene amount. And now they have four, which is on the lower end. So we'll, we'll see what happens um, with this room next year. Carter's here, folks. Power Hour LSU, Power Hour SEC. Power Hour NFL, you got them all right here yeah. uh, on YouTube, and it's great stuff. Another conflicting uh, topic out there in regards to talent evaluation and personnel ev evaluation would be my thought process coming into the offseason. The offensive line that we saw line up that first game against Florida State two times ago uh, has matured into one of the best units in the country. Then I've heard a few other people say, whoa, 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 whoa. There's been some transition. And of course, because of uh, the future first round pick that that his weight in that evaluation is is overplayed. And maybe the offensive line isn't quite as good as many people think. Now, th this Mark, this is the best offensive line I've ever seen at LSU. I mean, this is a very, very, very good group. And obviously, you know, we'll, we'll see what DJ Chester does next year at center. That's a big, you know, question mark. But this this group is very good. Now, I, I will also tell you, there is going to be a massive transition going from protecting Jaden Daniels, uh, one of the most explosive offensive weapons we've ever seen at the quarterback position, to now – protecting um, pretty much a pure pocket passer and Garrett Nussmeyer, who has limited mobility as a runner. So, you know, one thing um, uh, along with the running backs is, is the, the running game actually handing the football off 
to the running back because Jaden Daniels, especially towards the end of the year, was the running game. And their most consistent running back, Logan Diggs, transfers to Ole Miss. So um, that's going to be very fascinating with a new offensive coordinator, Joe Sloan, who, of course, was the quarterback coach for the Mike Denbrock offense last year. So they're hoping that continuity helps out. And we'll see if LSU can can still be a very good offense next year. This uh, Vegas matchup is fascinating for so many reasons. But the quarterback situation and the transition that they're both undertaking seem to mirror each other. They're going from Superman to a guy that they can probably get a better handle on. Okay, ball arrives from the snap. He's going to make his reads. He's going to deliver the ball on time. And that's the plan. Yeah. And, and look... They definitely need some other receivers to step up outside of Kyron Lacey, and that'll probably happen from the Liberty transfer, C.J. Daniels. Uh, they also have a transfer from Mississippi State, Xavion Thomas. And LSU is really high on Chris Hilton, who was a higher-rated wide receiver coming into LSU than Brian Thomas and um, Elite Neighbors, and he has some superior speed. So if he could be the vertical threat, this, this offense can be pretty good.